I'd like to ask my question. What I, I can go to these states with Mercedes, you. Do you Mercedes, Mercedes. Okay. Why are you doing that? Because it appears that it's just to sow doubt in the minds of people about whether their votes are going to matter. Why are you trying? So then, why are you trying to ensure that some people won't be able to vote? Ballot three days after the election. Let me ask you. Why are you okay? If everyone's no, you just said. You just said, Mercedes. Mercedes. Okay. If you you just Mercedes, you just said that everybody. Uh, you were just stating why are you talking so then why are you talking down why are you villainizing mail-in voting which would give people the ability to practice their right as an american and vote i'm going to ask you again do you think it's okay after november 3rd to be able to cast a ballot three days after or seven days after mercedes the election november mercedes vote yes you're no? saying you're saying that voter fraud is a thing and i'm telling you that it's not don't you worry that that's going to actually hurt you i mean isn't that to the point why the president yeah, sure, has said they when it comes okay issues. they have left Mer thousands mercedes of votes i'm asking i'm just going mercedes to, go mercedes fact, we can go have this is like so this is just yeah. pointless okay this is pointless yeah. i get it you're just saying a bunch of crap okay you're saying a bunch of crap can i tell you what now let me we're tell talking you, about you have, no, no, we're talking yes. about voting in a pandemic. What exactly is the job of a journalist? I thought it was to act as an objective arbiter and disseminator of information. Their entire purpose is supposed to be to ask questions without a political agenda. But what we continue to see from our former free press is an almost cult-like dedication to burying the truth in favor of pushing the political agenda of the far left and Democrat party. We're going to dig into this ridiculous interview, but first give me a quick moment to tell you about this special offer from this episode's sponsor, My Patriot Supply. When you see what's going on in our country, right now, there's plenty to be concerned about. Social unrest is making life very uncomfortable and it could quickly get worse. On top of that, a second wave of coronavirus is threatening to devastate our economy and our way of life again. Will we have severe food shortages this time? Will supply chains get cut off if people can't work? Will you even be able to go to the grocery store? These are realistic dangers, so don't let yourself be caught unprepared. Here's what to do right now. Go to www.preparewithdronetech.com and start building your emergency food supply today. The experts at My Patriot Supply are the only people I trust and use. And right now, you can save $100 off a full four-week supply of delicious, nutritious meals the whole family will love. My Patriot Supply makes it easy to be prepared at all times. And saving $100 off a life-saving four-week supply of food is too good to pass up. The second half of 2020 is going to be wild. So go to preparewithdronetech.com and get ready right now. That's preparewithdronetech.com. Do it now. Mercedes the election. November 3rd. Mercedes vote yes no? you're saying you're saying that voter fraud is a thing and I'm telling you that it's not. That's why you get segments like this one where something as serious as overhauling our entire election system just three months before the election is treated as unseriously as Hollywood gossip. She just claimed that voter fraud's not a thing. Well, this isn't just about voter fraud anyway. It's about people's votes actually getting to their destination. And if it does reach its destination, then it passes scrutiny of election officials. I mean, seriously, besides voter fraud, here's a list of all the problems associated with mail-in voting. You would expect an actual professional journalist to dig for the truth and scrutinize both sides of an argument, but instead what we find are these media snake oil salesmen covering up the inconvenient information and then working to smear or discredit anybody who brings up that information. I'd like to ask my question. I can go to these states with Mercedes, you. Mercedes, Mercedes, okay. Why are you doing that? Because it appears that it's well, just to sow doubt in the minds of people about whether their votes are going to matter. 
Did anybody else notice how hard it was to hear anything she was saying? Oh, I'm sure it was just technical issues. Also notice how this host plays the part of a parent trying to calm down an unruly child. The guest is just trying to get a word in, but the host keeps talking over them in the most condescending tone possible. While she talks over this guest, she's putting words in her mouth and throwing out multiple red herrings. At one point, the host claims, quote, it seems like you're just trying to sow doubt that people's votes are gonna matter. Okay, well, besides the fact that's exactly what CNN and the rest of the media have been doing since 2016, that's not at all what this person was trying to do. She's not sowing doubt. She's asking obvious questions that should be asked by this alleged journalist. Why are you trying? So then, why are you trying to ensure that some people won't be able to vote? Ballot three days after the election. Let me ask you. Why are you okay? If everyone's no, you just said. You just said, Mercedes. Mercedes. If you you just Mercedes. (laughs) What? How is she trying to ensure that some people won't be able to vote? Absentee ballots have been available for a long time, but given the history, I don't know why anybody would want to vote that way unless they absolutely had to. That's a major part of the concern here. Votes that never reach their destination because they were lost, or votes that are thrown out because the signature or the address didn't match. Or they just simply didn't meet any of a dozen different criteria. Throughout the segment, this fraud of a journalist completely ignores not only past issues with mail-in voting, but recent ones as well. Right now in New York City, they're in the midst of a major fiasco involving mail-in ballots. Surprisingly, even NBC News reported this story. Tonight, six weeks after the New York Democratic primary, congressional candidate Suraj Patel doesn't know if he won or lost because election officials have yet to announce a winner. It was just a complete mess of a system. Experts tell NBC News New York election officials were woefully unprepared. So those ballots, thousands of them, were not counted. Why are you trying, so then why are you trying to ensure that some people won't be able to vote? It's time to stop. Mercedes, the election, November 3rd. Mercedes, vote, yes you're, no? saying, you're saying that voter fraud is a thing, and I'm telling you that it's not, okay? This is pointless. Yeah. I get it. You're just saying a bunch of crap, okay? You're saying a bunch of crap. Can tr- I tell you what? No. Let me we're tell you. Talking about vo- no, no. We're talking about voting in a pandemic. And why are you talking about- down? Why are you villainizing mail-in voting? See there, she claims the guest is villainizing mail-in voting, but that's not what she's doing. She's just asking questions. Something this journalist should be doing, but she's not because it's not her job. While CNN and the rest of the Democrat media are trying to discredit and smear anybody who questions or scrutinizes mail-in voting, there are people out there who are raising questions. And is it any wonder? Currently, there's only five states that allow mail-in voting. The rest of the country simply doesn't have the infrastructure in place to handle a national presidential election by mail. Maybe we could put that into place over the course of the next few years, but not two months before an election. But don't take my word for it. How about Edward Foley, who is director of the election law program at Ohio State University? He said, postal ballots have been the source of, quote, the most significant voting recount disputes in recent decades. While absentee ballots can help keep people safe and expand voting access, they come with a drawback, a greater chance of litigation. Simply put, there are more things that can go wrong with vote by mail compared to in precinct voting. Given its limited implications so far in this country, it seems like a completely insane proposition to implement it nationwide just a couple months before the actual election. You're just saying a bunch of crap. Okay, you're saying a bunch of crap. And it was CBS News that just released their own study of mail-in voting, which found that 27% of their ballots got lost in the mail. When we went to collect everything, though, most of our votes seemed to be lost. 21% of our votes hadn't materialized after four days. 97 arrived, which sounds pretty good. Unless you consider the fact that that means three people who tried to vote by mail in our mock election were in fact disenfranchised by mail. In a close election, 3% could be pivotal. From my perspective, it seems like it's CNN and the rest of the media that are pushing this mail-in voting that want people to think their votes aren't going to matter. Why can't people go out and vote? 
They can go out to the grocery and other stores by social distancing and wearing their masks. Why can't they do that for voting? Why would the exact same social distancing guidelines not apply? We all know the answer to that. It's these contradictions and these hypocrisies that lead people to distrust the media and it's only getting worse. A new poll from Gallup and the left-leaning Knight Foundation shows that America's trust in media continues to plummet with pretty much only Democrats still trusting them. So this is what the study found. Americans think the media is vital for democracy. The vast majority of Americans, 84%, say the news media is critical. Half, 49% of all Americans, think the media is very biased. Americans think the media is pushing an agenda. Three in four people, 74%, worry that owners of media companies are influencing coverage, up five points since 2017. They also suspect that inaccuracies in reporting are purposeful, with 54% believing that reporters misrepresent the facts and 28% believe reporters make them up entirely. And of course, distrust of the media cuts along partisan lines for obvious reasons. I know, folks, I know. It's rough to see this blatant gaslighting day in and day out. It's having its desired effect on people too. I see it all around me. But we had to continue to press forward to continue to expose the corrupt media and go out and vote in November. You can help me continue this fight by supporting this channel's sponsors or by donating to one of the platforms that are listed in the description or pinned comment. Thanks for watching. Keep coming back.